That's better. Wow, I don't know if you guys caught that live, but Zane just increased in size. <laughs> level. Uh, we <laughs> we are always breaking ground here at Healthcare Tech Show. We can even increase the size of a human being in flash time. So good yeah. to see you guys. It's Kevin and Zane from RPH Ally and the Healthcare Tech Show. Uh, today we're talking about something that's kind of near and dear to our hearts when it comes to meetings. You know, when we're getting together, how we're sharing information. Are we being successful today between healthcare entities? or collaborators and are we being successful with our patients zay and i will jump into some things we struggle with and some tools we've seen that have been successful for us to put in place i'll play the reel and we will jump right into it what's up brother i you know, we were dropping some beats there and you and i were both laughing because i was just talking about my wife telling me that there is rumors that InSync could be doing a tour. And then I look below your name there, the Are We In Sync? I was wondering if you're a big fan. Are you are you a fan of Justin Timberlake? Are you a I I, I, I have been known to bump some in sync back in the day. Um and the Baxter Boys, but I think I was more of a BSB fan though. Um, See, me too. Back, Backstreet Boy to Heart. I went to yeah. a Backstreet Boy concert and I'm pretty sure it was 90% women that were there. And that was myself and my brother-in-law. And I will without shame admit that I was probably singing louder than most of them around there because those songs are just my, my upbringing. Like they're, they're, yeah. just, they're woven. Zane. There's some, there's some, there's some bangers in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. So speaking of some bangers in there, um, Sometimes there's some brutal meetings that we encounter, like just some that's like, oh my goodness, like this is brutal to go through. And I've been in patient visits that are the exact same. You know, it seems like no one set them up for a success. You're catching everything else on the back end because there wasn't enough communication. There wasn't enough input. There wasn't enough monitoring. And now you're hoping to go, oh no, I've got to catch this fire because before it comes worse. Give me your experiences, buddy, on, on that side of things, and, and have you improved them just from you being you? No. I mean, I think um, there's any encounter with a patient is always brutal in the sense that not for, I think, really both sides, because from the provider side, you're trying to, you have such a long list of things you need to get to that are just that patient and more things. So you're rushing through things, um, even though we shouldn't, but, you know, the the reality is rushing. Rush, we are rushing through things. And then for the patient side, um, a lot of times they're just finding out something new, tragic, or some, some something that will literally change the rest of their life, right? And I don't think we do a good enough job of relaying that to them. I think, you know, there's been a lot of times where I've talked to patients and they don't really recognize the mag gratitude. I mean, not gratitude, sorry. Wow. The magnitude. <laughs> of the situation right or why they're even taking a medication you know I, I remember talking to a lady in in the hospital who came in for a dvt um who was on a blood thinner but she wasn't taking the blood thinner and no one knew why eventually i went and go, went to talk to her and she said oh i didn't know what this was for um and she had a pe before that so she had a pe got put in the blood thinner and then came back with the dvt and didn't that whole time did not know why uh, what that medication was for. So, I mean, oh boy. that's a pretty big deal, right? Um, and she was, you could tell that she wasn't lying. She's like, oh, I didn't know that. After after I, and I'm not saying that it's just me, but I was the one in that situation where I told her this is what it's for. After that, she started taking it. And she didn't, I mean, she came with that, back to the hospital for other reasons, but uh, at least not for that. Wow. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a perfect example. I read the other day, it was, I, I guess, brother from another mother i believe his name is graham walker he's an md um and he was saying something like this zane that when it comes to technology doing something for physicians one thing that physicians wish it would do is help with wraparound care is the way he just find it talking about you've only got so much time in that meeting i mean you and i would both love it if it was prospective you know, you've already got, you know, the knowledge about the patient the patient can be educated prior to the to visit. So you can have a really intelligent conversation. Oftentimes when like you study through like, what shouldn't you do inside of a meeting? You shouldn't be writing things down. You shouldn't be just going verbatim off of things. It should be brainstorming. And that's no different from a patient encounter. And so I think the prospective element can help with you having a more fruitful patient encounter. But what Graham's talking about is 
you've got seven minutes, right? It's quote unquote, seven minutes to be able to see the patient, deliver all the information. And then there are a ton of questions and follow up based on that information that you've given. So having the ability for us to say, hey, technology, how can you play a role in saying, I've just diagnosed this patient, I've just given them these treatments. How can that patient now get more information about that successfully and safely? And then that information be relayed back to me on what did they need to know and what was told to them is a, is a big push in his mind. And I think it's not a whole lot from different than what you and I are talking about when it comes to meetings between colleagues, Zane. Any takeaways or thoughts there on the, the wraparound care need? I really love the, the one thing that you talked about was brainstorming. Um, and I love that idea, like just the thought of brainstorming with your patient of how to best take care of them, right? I mean, there's most of the times in medicine, there's multiple ways to go down a treatment pathway, right? Like there's multiple treatments we can go down or whatever. And a lot of times it's just like, okay, well, we're just going to go down the list. We know the list in our head. They do not, right? We're just going down. Why can't, and, and when you said brainstorming, I think it'd be awesome. Like if somebody, if you sit down with your patient and be like, okay, these are all the things, what can we do? And then you're going to, it's kind of like a back and forth and kind of going back to now they feel like they're part of their care rather than just being told what to do. Now they're actively engaging in how to get better. And I, I actually love that idea. I don't know if there's any studies or anything like that, but um, I think as a patient, I would love that. Um, yeah. I mean, there is something to, uh, I mean, if, the, if there's a patient like, oh, just tell me what to do, then you just tell them what to do. But if there's, I think most most patients nowadays, yeah, actually most patients nowadays, in my opinion, in my career, have been wanting to either know more or be more active in their decision making process. Yeah, I think that that really speaks to the fact that yes, we are pinched for time, and that's always going to be the case. You know, no matter what, there's not always going to be enough time to continue to elaborate. So I think that when it comes to meeting with colleagues and meeting with patients, the ability to have pre-meeting homework or information that can be consumed so you can have a more fruitful whatever length of time together is imperative. And then the next piece is the home, the takeaway homework, you know, that wraparound care that Graham was defining there when it comes to what other things need to be done, not only on education, but also on monitoring and safety and efficacy kind of components to make sure the next steps are successful for both the patient and the covered, like the covered entity or the facility. Because you and I both know that pretty soon the accountability with these capitated rates and value-based care contracts that are out there, the facility wants to make sure that patient's doing as well as it possibly can, even outside of altruistic, you know, reasons. They need to do it because they need to make sure that they're saving costs on those individual patients. Tell me this, buddy, when it comes to like technology that you put in place, what have you done to make you better at meetings when you're meeting with folks in your company or with whoever it might be? I turn off my camera. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, I think that note taking uh, <laughs> during residency, I would um, I, I started taking a lot of notes during uh, mainly because during residency, my director was like, never walk into my room without a pen and paper or something to write with and something to write on. And she's like, you're always going to need something around you all the time. So I always used to have notes with me all the time. So since like residency, I've always come into a habit of bringing something to take notes on during a meeting. And yeah. there's a couple of things, reason for that. I tend to doze off a little bit. I think I, I genuinely think I have like ADD, but I genuinely, I, but that keeps me active in the meetings. I don't have to be the meeting minute taker, but it, I, I'm writing down notes. Even now I have um, like different note taking programs that I use uh, while I'm in meetings at work. Um, and I'm just typing away. I create to-do lists. You know, I'm able to create a to-do list, a follow-up list, all that stuff. Um, and I'm able to keep it because, you know, I can't remember everything. And that kind of goes back into medicine is, okay, we're not talking about my life or death, right? I'm not dealing with the trauma of just figuring, learning that I have to now change the way I eat, change the way I live completely from the past 50 years. Now I got to completely change that. Right. And, you know, we don't really facilitate like that note taking part of it, right? Like or do, how many times do we ask somebody like, oh, do you want a pen or paper or something? Like we don't, I think we do, I think there's a place where technology can come into place, right? Like either we record the notes and it's transcribing the conversation and then maybe you can give them the conversation afterwards or you know ai can summarize that conversation create a note specific for the patient in very friendly language right that lays out certain steps right um i think those are things that we can do right and then even in, in that thing i'm sure you can create a to-do list right like you can just say here's your to-do list and that you're 
think it just be like, okay, these let's create a to-do list for the patient. And then also something that I talk about and I've talked about quite a bit is a drip campaign, right? Um, you can't shove everything into their brain in that, even if you have an hour, let's say you have an hour encounter, they're yeah. not going to remember most of it. Let's just be honest here. Uh, yeah. We're using a lot of big words, talking about a lot of random things. Medication names are being thrown around left or right. You know, one you have to take twice a day, one you have to take with food, the other one you have to take in the morning. Don't mix these two together. Eat this before breakfast, all this stuff. And we get confused, right? I mean, there's been times where I'm talking about multiple medications and I'm confusing them. And I have to like, literally, before I used to go into things, I would write down the sick codes in front of me, like, this one take with not that I didn't know it, but it was just like, so I don't mess it up for them. Cause if I say it wrong once it's all gone. So I think with a drip campaign, for those who don't know, a drip campaign is basically slowly, uh, you see it all the time. You'll go on Amazon, not I mean, Google, Amazon does it too, but there's many companies where you put something, you sign up and they send you like, Hey, welcome. And then a couple of days later, if you're not back, they'll be like, Hey, I uh, haven't seen you in a little bit, you know, and then they just kind of give you a little bit more information and they just, it's like different touch points and they're telling you different information over time um, with the hope that you're going to come back to them. And that's really what it is. Marketing has been using it for as long as I think email has been around. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's be serious here. And they throw coat keep on. And why can't we do that in healthcare? Right. I think that would be amazing. Like in the beginning, you just tell them, Hey, you have diabetes, you know, oh. we're, we're going to start with these medications, you know, in a couple of days, we're going to send you some information. I know you're dealing with a lot, but we're going to send you some information. Then a couple of days later, they get something that says, hey, have you picked up your medication? Yes or no. Great. You've picked up your medications. This is what these medications do the next day. Like, hey, and then, you know, they they start next Monday. So maybe the weekend before, like Friday, like, hey, you send them another message. Be like, hey, you know, you're going to start next Monday. Remember, you're going to start next Monday. These are the medications you're taking. This is how you take them. Yep. Okay, great. Now they're ready for Monday. Then a week later, be like, hey, these are common side effects. Just want to make sure is your stomach is is your stomach feeling okay? Is your you know are you throwing up? Are you you know are how are you feeling right? Because you know it's come the common side effects. These are common side effects to watch out for. Then a couple of weeks later, you you know you, you just kind of I think that's a more I think that's how more most most of us digest information anyways and in is in small chunks rather than just like a fire hose down our mouth. Well, I mean, I, I think you illuminated a number of things that I think are really interesting little talking points for us. Uh, one is we always think about note taking during a visit. I shouldn't say always. Most of the time we take it from the perspective of who is providing the care because I want to be able to have clinical documentation. Well, guess what? The individual on the other side, the receiving individual that actually needs the care and that's their life, they need the, that broken down as well. And so I think being able to give them some kind of breakdown of here's the information that was regurgitated to you and spewed upon you. So at least you can one, have some documentation. But the thing I love even more is being able to have AI take that complex conversation, break it out down into individual nuggets and create its own drip campaign that doesn't look like we're watching a PBS documentary. It, it looks like we're watching TikTok, right? I mean, because that's what we need. Like we need that as human beings. There's a reason why, you know, sites that are having their, their commentary and their information less than 90 seconds are more successful because we have very short attention spans to things that we're not shooting endorphins off of. And sorry for everybody in the medical community, but when someone starts telling you about your disease state, you're not like super excited to be able to see the next video. Um, and so I think that those bite-sized chunks of being able to break that information down and deliver it over a period of time for success, along with some reminder capabilities is really powerful as a takeaway from that individual meeting. It's just like you with your notes saying, like you are saying, you do a to-do list. You're not going to get all the to-do list done that exact afternoon after you've had the meeting or even the next day. So you've got to have that to-do list broken down into here's the top things I've got to get done. Here's the next wave of things that I need to get done. And that's no different from a patient when it comes to Here's what I have to do first. And I have to be able to consume this information. Here's what I have to look out for side effects. Here's what I have to do with my PT. Here's, you know, the next follow-up visit, et cetera, et cetera. And I think a really easy example, Zane, that you and I have talked about before is in the, the surgical setting. So you come in for a pre-op appointment. There's a bunch of information that goes your way. There's a bunch of pre-op elements that you have to be able to take care of. If it's cleansing for MRSA, if it's any washes or rinses that you're utilizing, if it is bowel prep, you know, all of those pieces they get forgotten. And then you got to cancel surgery. you got to reschedule surgery and we can make it so much easier with something like this. Any 
any other takeaways, buddy, in, inside of that kind of housing, yeah. patient meeting I mean, housing? Yeah, I mean, and also like to your point, you know, you can take that, you can you can send them a drip campaign specifically for them, right? You know, we came up with a to-do list for them specifically, right? Now we're talking about personalized care, but it's yeah. but problem with personalizing care is it it takes a lot of work, right? That's why you pay extra for personalized care. But how about you know you create that plan in the in the room with them? It, the, your the notes are being taken, the to-do list is already created, and now you just say send this to-do list to them at the time that they need to do it, you know, Monday, they need to pick up their medication, go to do lists and send, you know, like, and just kind of do it that way. And it's personalized to their specific needs. Right. And, and the surgical thing is perfect. I think a lot of us have had surgeries before uh, for various different reasons. And you get like this thick packet and like, you're really nervous because, and, and let's be honest, it's not well, done right it's just like there's no rhyme or reason to it like the actual directions make no sense even for people that are in the medical field like i've read directions and i'm like what am i supposed to do am i supposed to do this right now after what and and you're sitting there confused like freaking out then you get calls at at, at the nurse's station asking like hey can you clarify this so all these things you know they're now you're kind of seeing like a domino effect right if we can take care of it on the front end make it easy and simple to digest. Now we're, now we have less phone calls coming and less disruptions, all these other things. And on top of that, the most important thing, the patient is getting exactly what they want when they need it. And that's the biggest thing with healthcare, right? It's not about giving them care when it's convenient for us. It's giving them care and the information when it's convenient for them. Boom. I don't think we can, I don't think we can shake anything else off better than that. I think you got your puppets on a string and all your other sync songs right there, all dropped in one banger of make it convenient for them. <laughs> Baby. Bye, bye, bye. All right, everybody. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you got some good insights from, from that one from Zane and I, uh, any other topics you guys want to bring up in the future? Any times you want to jump on as a guest, we'd always love to be able to have you. We appreciate you guys tuning in each week. And uh, let us know. We'll see you guys next week and have a great weekend. Bye, guys.